Part of the appeal of the General Mobile Radio Service, or GMRS, is its informal nature. Generally speaking, this is the place people come because of its accessibility and lack of uptight dorkery that goes along with what they might have expected to experience in the ham radio world. That being said, without at least a basic sense of human decency and decorum, this world would quickly devolve into the dumpster fire that is CB, or as I like to call it, Cretan Band. But how do you best go about navigating the GMRS world without either coming off as an uptight ham or a totally uncouth escapee from radio's version of the trailer park? Today's video is, is brought to you by... We gotta fan those out. I don't want no... If you can't handle the work coming over your radio, don't waste my time, don't waste your money. In this video, I'm going to answer that by giving you five key points to GMRS radio etiquette. Point one. Clarity. English is the preferred language of most GMRS users and you are actually required to give your call sign in English voice and code word per part 95. You'll also want to make sure your voice is clear, so go ahead and speak a little bit slower than normal, especially if you're excited and use a normal tone. Don't hold the microphone away from your face either. Hold it directly out in front of you a couple of inches away and speak with some authority. Not sure if you're getting out or being heard? Take the time to check out your equipment. If you're going to be using a repeater, double check you've entered your frequencies and tones correctly. This is one place where a lot of people go wrong and then wonder why they aren't heard. After you've done that, make sure there isn't an ongoing conversation before you key up and identify yourself. Go ahead and ask for a radio or a signal check. If you're getting out, someone should come back and tell you that they're hearing you and how well. Just don't be the guy who does this every hour or every single day as an excuse to try to get someone to talk to you. Once you've established that your radio is working, I'd avoid asking for a check until I made some changes to my setup or programming. Also, be clear who you want to speak to. Remember back in the day before we had cell phones with instant access to all of our contacts and we actually had to memorize the phone numbers of people who were important to us or ones we'd call a lot? Well, call signs are the same way. Memorize the ones of people you speak with frequently or might need to get in contact with. That's their unique identifier, like a phone number, and how you get a hold of them is there might be more than one John Smith on any given frequency at any given time. Simplicity. Don't get overly technical or jargon happy, unless you know the people you're speaking with are on the same page. There are people from all walks of life and backgrounds enjoying GMRS, not just radio nerds. So don't assume they're gonna know what you're talking about if you start talking about something by an obscure acronym or abbreviation. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Cuddy say can't hang. Oh, stewardess, I speak jive. Oh, good. Just hang loose blood. She gonna catch up on the rebound out of men. Remember, while there are quite a few of us on GMRS who hold amateur licenses, the grand majority don't. For many people, that is the appeal, so don't be the dude who jumps in with the phonetic alphabet every time you drop your call letters. Number three, brevity. Think before you speak. This means a few things. Decide on what you're gonna say before you key up the mic. A long string of uhs and ums ties up bandwidth someone else with something to actually say might be using. Avoid long conversations without taking a break. A break can be something as simple as taking the time to drop your call letters, as required every 15 minutes by the FCC, and asking if anyone out there needs to chime in. Don't key up immediately after the person you are talking with lets go of their mic. This will give the opportunity for emergency traffic to break in if necessary. Finally, if you're on a repeater, don't transmit for more than 90 seconds to two minutes at a time. If you need to talk longer than that, say pause, release the microphone, allow the repeater to drop out, then key it back up again. This will allow the repeater to reset and prevent it from timing out or cuckooing. Really, it's a thing. We do it on the 575 all the time for fun. Number four, security. One way to imagine communicating with someone via GMRS is that you are both standing on opposite sides of a crowded public square, conversing back and forth with megaphones. While yes, you can effectively communicate that way, it also means that everyone in that square can potentially hear what you're saying. 
Never transmit sensitive or confidential information. Always assume whatever you say over a GMRS radio is public and can and will be heard by anyone and everyone monitoring that frequency for miles. If you wouldn't publish it in an open forum on the internet with your real name attached to it, it's best not to speak it over the airwaves. Also, remember, there is a searchable directory on the FCC website of call sign holders. If you're not comfortable letting people know your home address every time you drop your call letters, it's a good idea to make sure your license is linked to a PO box or some other address that is not the one you live at. Finally, remember that no matter how many times a manufacturer writes it on their boxes, manuals, or marketing materials, privacy tones aren't private. They are only a way of filtering out unwanted traffic. If you need to communicate about a private or sensitive subject, it's probably best to call, text, or email. Not only are those methods of communication designed to be private, they also have certain legal backings behind them, meaning you can expect a level of privacy much greater than that of GMRS. Finally, number five, courtesy. If you hear someone calling for a specific call sign and it's not you, don't respond. Radios aren't capable of two people talking at the same time, so when you're keyed up, you might be stopping that other person from acknowledging their call. Wait your turn. Don't interrupt if you hear other people talking unless you have a useful thing to add or in its emergency. If you need to break in, simply key up and say break in between their transmissions and wait for one party to acknowledge they've heard you. Typically, they'll say something like, go ahead, break. That's your cue. The floor is yours. Step up and shine. Just don't say over at the end of every transmission. We know you're done talking when the transmission cuts out. Otherwise, you just sound like a dude talking on a walkie talkie in an old World War II movie. It's painful to listen to. Okay, I'm okay. losing them. We just had them in here good a minute ago. Bring the men over by foot. Get them moving. Over. Okay, I'll send them over in twos and threes. Out. Can you hold on for five hours? Over! No, no, move! Oh, no, move! Now we were all in this together, you can't go alone! Over! Now we're pulling out, and we're pushing forward. Oh, what the hell am I doing here? Franco, get me my uniform! When you are finally done talking for good, and want to relinquish your place on the floor, give your call letters and say, clear. If you intend on sticking around and will be available should someone want to reach back out to say, you know, follow up on your conversation, just say clear and monitor. Finally, it's time for me to get on my soapbox a little bit when it comes to courtesy. And that's on topics or content of conversation. The FCC has some well-published rules about what can and can't be said as far as vulgarity. The FCC, however, doesn't have as much in the way of rules as far as topics. No need to worry. I propose we solve that by bringing back a long forgotten gentlemanly tradition to guide us. The three topics you never talk about at the bar. Maybe some of you remember them, but if not, here they are. Religion, politics, and race. It was hard enough to tell where a person stood back in the day when we could actually see them while we were having a conversation. But in a completely blind one, you don't know who that individual does or does not pray to, did or did not vote for, or to what ethnic or racial group they belong. The one thing you can be sure about is they, like you, share a passion for the GMRS hobby. Enough so that they'd pay money and get a license to talk on it too. Why don't we stick to topics that promote and enrich that experience and leave the shit posting for Facebook where we can hit the unfriend or unfollow button to our heart's content until we find that comfortable echo chamber of ignorance and bliss to wallow in. Should this be a woke safe space for hypersensitivity? No, but there should be some consideration paid to the fact that not everyone sees the world the same way you do. Enough preaching for the day. I hope you've enjoyed this installment into my intro to GMRS series. If you'd like to see more, please be sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you'll never miss a new video. Until next time, be good.